This video is brought to you by MSI and their new collection of powerful gaming laptops. The GT76 Titan in particular is an absolute beast with its fully fledged Intel Core i9-19900K processor inside and NVIDIA RTX 2070 graphics, cooled by a unique 4-fan 11 heat pipe designed for the best performance. It's also worth checking out the GE65 Raider with its 240Hz IPS display, Intel 9th Gen processors, NVIDIA RTX graphics, and attractive design. To learn more, click the links in the description below. Welcome back to the Hardware Unbox News Corner. This week has been dominated by E3, including AMD's massive suite of announcements that included a 16-core Ryzen CPU, Navi GPUs, architecture discussion, and more. Of course, I'm not going to cover all that stuff again in this video. We already have a separate piece giving you all the juicy details there, but really that was going to be the major story from this week as far as hardware is concerned. Despite that, a few other interesting stories have emerged, including further info on NVIDIA's Super Teaser, a few things we missed from the AMD announcements, and LG's new monitors, which are attracting a bit of attention. So let's get started. Information relating to NVIDIA's GeForce Super Series is beginning to heat up and leak out of the cracks. I want to preface this story by saying that I haven't confirmed the exact details presented here in the leaks from video cards and others, but the general tale of the supposed products and announcements fits with what I heard at Computex regarding this release. Lease. With that said, as with any unconfirmed story, think critically and don't blindly believe everything you see. Anyway, the current information we have suggests that NVIDIA will unveil the GeForce RTX 20 Super Series next week, but will wait until mid-July to actually launch the products. NVIDIA has only just started briefing partners on Super, so naturally there's a bit of time required to prepare the products, and we expect that these new GPUs will hit shelves after AMD's Navi launch. And this all seems to fit with the whispers we heard at Computex, where AIBs were generally more clued up about what they needed to do for Navi than for the Super launch. So what are NVIDIA's Super graphics cards? Well, allegedly, it's a spec bump for the RTX 2080, 2070, and 2060 to unlock more CUDA cores and in some situations provide a different memory configuration. The RTX 2080 Super, for example, uses a fully unlocked TU-104 GPU with 3072 CUDA cores up from 2944 and gets bumped up to 16 gigabits per second GDDR6 memory, still in an 8 gigabyte configuration. The RTX 2070 Super is more interesting because rather than using a TU-106 GPU like existing 2070s, it supposedly gets an upgrade to a cut down TU-104 with 2560 CUDA cores compared to 2304 in existing models. However, it retains the same memory configuration. Meanwhile, the alleged RTX 2060 Super still uses TU-106, but now with 2176 6 CUDA cores instead of 1920, and it gets a bump from 6 gigabytes to 8 gigabytes of GDDR6, which will please those that felt the 2060 was a bit stingy on the memory front. The expectation is these new supermodels will be released at the price points of the existing RTX 20 products, while the existing cards will get a price cut. Given the rumor suggests the GPUs are only receiving around 5 to 15% more CUDA cores, the cards aren't going to be anything amazing, but an extra 10% to performance for the same price without any change in architecture for now is nothing to sneeze at and should help Nvidia bridge the gap to the next generation while keeping competitive with AMD's Navi. Of course, like I said a few minutes ago, this is still largely an unconfirmed story, but I think parts of this are, if anything, going to be pretty close to what we eventually see when NVIDIA reveals the final details, which means July is shaping up as an interesting month for GPU battles between AMD and NVIDIA. Speaking of AMD GPUs, one thing I forgot to mention in my initial coverage of AMD's E3 announcements is the RX 5700 XT 50th Anniversary Edition. This card was unveiled during AMD's live stream, but wasn't provided to us ahead of time, but I'll get you up to speed now just in case you missed it. The 50th Anniversary Edition doesn't do anything radically different. It does have a black and gold cooler design as opposed to the standard red for AMD's Radeon cards, but the general blower design is the same. So it's not like Vega where the top end Vega 60 was also available in a more powerful liquid-cooled model. The GPU configuration is the same as the RX 5700 XT with 2560 stream processors, but it gets a slight overclock from a 1605 MHz base to a 1680 MHz base. This should translate into a 75 MHz higher game clock for around 4% more raw performance. The card is priced at $500 compared to $450 for the regular RX 5700 XT, so you're definitely paying a bit of a premium for the 50th 
20th anniversary brand in here. Given we expect most regular RX 5700 XTs to achieve a 75 megahertz overclock, the selling point here is definitely the cooler design, so probably only a product for the hardcore AMD fans. But nevertheless, at least AMD is providing a slight performance boost out of the box rather than just giving you a cooler and nothing else. USB 4 is on track for release by the end of 2020, according to a Nantech who recently spoke to the USB promoter group. The specification is currently sitting at version 0.7 and progressing quickly, which is why the group believes devices featuring USB 4 should be ready by the end of next year. Earlier this year, USB 3.2 was unveiled with speeds up to 20 gigabits per second, but the naming scheme was pretty stupid stupid and confusing for customers. With USB 4, there is hope that both fronts will improve. The spec should bring speeds of up to 40 gigabits per second as the technology is based on Intel's now royalty-free Thunderbolt 3 protocol. It should also allow for backwards compatibility with older protocols, including Thunderbolt 3, over the same Type-C cables and support simultaneous data and display streams. The best news is probably that the USB promoter group are considering a new logo and branding for USB 4, which will hopefully stop the ridiculous situation where older USB protocols are renamed with each new generation. The final spec is expected to be published in the next few months. LG has detailed two new monitors that claim to be the world's first IPS panels with a one millisecond greater gray response time. The models in question are the LG 27GL850 and the 38GL950G, both are fairly unique and generating a lot of interest in our Patreon exclusive Discord chat. And for those that keep asking, yes, I've requested review units, so hopefully I'll get those in when available. The 27GL850 is a 27 inch 1440p 144Hz panel that's G sync compatible. In other words, it's a free sync slash adaptive sync monitor that comes NVIDIA certified. It uses a flat nano IPS panel with 98% DCI-P3 coverage. Meanwhile, the 38GL950G is a unique 3840x1600 ultra wide at 37.5 inches in size. So it's still a 21.9 monitor, but provides a slightly higher resolution and size than standard 3440x1440 panels. Crucially, it also supports up to a 175Hz refresh rate when overclocked as well as 98% DCI-P3 coverage through Nano IPS technology and Display HDR400 certification, and it supports G-Sync. The key selling point here are those claimed one millisecond response times for an IPS panel, which would be super compelling if true, given that even the best IPS panels these days are more around the four millisecond mark. But I do remain a bit skeptical here, given many monitor companies like to fudge around with these response time metrics. While they claim this is a greater gray measurement, is it the average or just the fastest response it can achieve. I'll have to test that when I get my hands on with it. Pre-orders for the monitor, yes that's a thing now, open on July 1st and from what I hear they are expected to be available later that month. This next story is an interesting one I spotted on TechSpot this morning. An upcoming Windows 10 update will break some Bluetooth devices that remain unsecure. The security update CVE 2019-2102 intentionally prevents connections between the OS and flawed devices, specifically those that use well-known encryption keys such as some security fobs. To know if a device can't pair due to this latest update, you'll have to head into the event log and look for a specific event name, which is great for advanced users, but will certainly frustrate more casual users that won't know why their device doesn't work. And naturally, given this is a security concern, Microsoft advised that if you are affected, you should contact the manufacturer of your Bluetooth device to see if an update exists to correct the security issue. Microsoft really aren't offering a workaround here. It's either check if there's an update or simply not roll out the update to your device. Final topic for this week, just wanted to touch on some of the new ray tracing announcements out of E3. Not going to cover every single game talked about at the show, or we'd be here for hours, but I did like how several major announcements were accompanied by talk of ray tracing. I know a lot of people are big ray tracing haters, and we certainly shared our criticisms of NVIDIA's RTX platform previously, but realistically, the more games that support ray tracing, the bigger the ecosystem will grow and the better implementations will become. It all has to start from somewhere, and the end result should be better graphics for PC gamers, especially when we have all of NVIDIA, AMD, and Intel supporting ray tracing to some extent in the next few years. Anyway, I was surprised to see many of the big launches supporting ray tracing, Cyberpunk 2077, Watch Dogs Legion, the reboot of Call of Duty Modern Warfare, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2, and Doom Eternal round out the major games to include ray tracing, plus of course a few others. 
That has very quickly doubled the number of popular titles set to use ray tracing. I think we'll see even more come the next generation of consoles, which are said to support ray tracing as well. And that's it for this week's News Corner, a bit of a shorter one given those huge announcements earlier this week. Don't forget to check out Steve's investigation into whether the latest update to Windows 10 has really improved performance for Ryzen owners. Subscribe for more News Corner episodes every week. Consider supporting us on Patreon. I'll catch you in the next one.